My mother loves her grandchild after all. That's why she bought such an expensive gift for her as a school entrance present. My mother-in-law, who was a money grabber and a habitual daughter-in-law snob, had been out of touch with me. Then all of a sudden, my mother-in-law gave my daughter a brand new bag. My husband is very happy. Perhaps she wants to improve this bad relationship. With that thought in mind, I took the bag out of the box. Wow! A pink bag! Give it to me quickly! My daughter shouts happily. The next moment, I took the bag to the kitchen and set it on fire on the stove. The fire quickly catches on and the bag begins to melt from the edges. Mom! What are you doing? That's my bag! Hey! What do you think you're doing? My husband rushes to his daughter who screams. He quickly puts a wet towel on the back to put out the fire. My mother went out of her way to buy it for our daughter. What in the world have you done with it? My husband's face turned red, and he yelled at me. But I told him in a calm voice, Did you see what's in the back? What? My husband looked at me with furrowed brows. I strengthened my tone and said again, Just take a good look inside it. My name is Emily. I'm a 34 years old married woman, raising my daughter Lee, who turned six this year. My husband Benjamin and I came together through a somewhat unusual circumstance. I was originally a sales representative for a large company. One of the office clerks at one of my frequent clients was Sarah, who would later become my mother-in-law. She offered me a cup of tea whenever I came in, and before I knew it, we became friends, calling each other Sarah and Emily. And then, one day, she said to me, Hey Emily, would you like to meet my son? I raised him with pride. I'm very proud of him. That's how I was introduced to Benjamin. He worked for a prestigious company, but he was gentle and not used to women. But that made him sincere and I liked him. After that, we started dating very quickly, and since we were both of the right age, we decided to get married right away. Sarah, who is going to be my mother-in-law, is a good person, and Benjamin is perfect. We would be happy. At that time, I was innocently thinking like that. But it wasn't until three months into our marriage that I began to feel a sense of discomfort. We put all of our salaries, except for each other's allowance, into a shared account. We agreed that we would pay our bills and save from there. I was doing just that, but all Benjamin has to put in is $1,100 a month. Considering where he worked, I would have thought he was getting more than double that. In disbelief, I decided to ask Benjamin about it. Hey, Benjamin. Isn't the amount of money you bring in every month too small? Is it possible that you're keeping a secret debt from me? No, it's not a debt. I promised my mom I'd give her $1,500 every month, so... Huh? Benjamin's story went like this. Ever since he started working, he has been giving his mother $1,500 a month. Since Benjamin was living at home at the time, he offered to give it to her. Benjamin thought it was for the living expenses and continued to pay it. He said it continued even after he got married. What? That's not right. You don't owe your mother money, do you? That's true, but... Besides, you are already married and living with me. You don't even need to pay for living expenses. That's true, but my mother has a lot of needs too. Benjamin's father died when he was very young, so he was raised by a single woman. That's why their bond is so strong. I learned this after we were married. Benjamin's mother picked out everything for him to wear until he left home after we got married. He ate his mother's handmade lunchboxes for lunch. He couldn't reveal against anything his mother said, so he listened to his mother's advice on everything. In other words, Benjamin was quite a mama's boy. I was a little taken back by the story, 
But at the same time, I was thinking, I can't imagine what kind of relationship I would have with both of them. I hope things will change a little after we got married. Thinking back, my mother-in-law was always dressed in expensive fancy clothes. I had no idea it was coming out of Benjamin's paycheck. In the end, Benjamin wanted to keep things the way they were. For a while, I had to settle for a monthly allowance of $1,500 for my mother-in-law. I also had enough income to get by for the time being. But that didn't last long because I found out I was pregnant. Benjamin, who loved children, was overjoyed and took great care of me. Apart from the problems with my mother-in-law, Benjamin is by nature a very nice man. Whoa, Emily, I'm so happy. Is it a boy or a girl? Oh, Benjamin, it's too soon to tell. Now I have a favor to ask you. What favor? I want you to stop giving money to your mother. I won't be able to work when I'm pregnant and have the baby. And raising the baby, we need all the money we can get. It's just not enough. I see. Then Benjamin got an impish look on his face, thought for a bit, and said, I understand. We need to start raising our children. I will put all the money in the house instead of giving it to mom. So Benjamin started to put his entire salary into the family budget from that month. Sometime later, my mother-in-law paid a surprise visit to our house. How are you, Emily? I came to talk to Benjamin today. My mother-in-law smiling. Before we were married, I thought she was kind and friendly. Now she seems kind of creepy. Oh, mom, what's going on? Benjamin, you didn't forget to give me this month money, did you? My mother-in-law smiled and held out her hand to Benjamin, who briskly replied, Oh, I'm sorry. I can't give you any more money this month. What? What are you talking about? Emily is pregnant. You know how much money it's going to cost to raise a baby. I can't afford $1,500 a month. This is the first time we've told my mother-in-law about my pregnancy. I thought she would be thrilled, but her reaction was unexpected. I don't care about any of that. Just make sure you give me the money. Mom, you've been giving me money all this time. I told you raising a family costs money. Well then, give me $1,100. Just transfer it to my account. I interrupted them in a panic. Sarah, I can't work when I'm pregnant and giving birth. We don't have any money to give you. Shut up! You're the one who put him up to this! My mother-in-law suddenly turned pale and glared at me. I froze, startled by the force of her stare. Benjamin has always listened to me. Of course it's because he married you that he suddenly started talking like this. Oh, mom. You both work for big companies. You should have given me more. My mother-in-law was a different person from the kind Sarah had been before we got married. I was surprised to see her change her attitude when it came to money. But I retorted. Well, you are still active too, aren't you? That's none of your business. Give me the money you have for now. What? What are you talking about? I'm asking you to give me the money you have in your wallet. I won't leave until I get it. Broken by his mother's insults, Benjamin took $140 out of his wallet and handed it to my mother-in-law. I watched in amazement, but now my mother-in-law held out her hand to me. You too. What? Me too? Benjamin didn't know what to do. I didn't want to give her the money but I wanted her to go home as soon as possible. I pulled out my wallet. With trembling hands, I held out $220. She grabbed it and put it in her own wallet. You really don't appreciate your mother enough. I can't believe Benjamin turned out like this. Oh, Sarah. You shut up. I'm leaving today, but I will not forgive you. My mother-in-law got up and left quickly. The two of us, Benjamin and I, were left standing there for a while. 
Emily, sorry, my mother. Benjamin apologized to me, but I couldn't answer him, so I retreated to the room. For a while after that, I heard that my mother-in-law was urging Benjamin to give her money, but Benjamin was adamant in his refusal. I guess she realized that Benjamin's attitude would not change. Gradually, the urging from my mother-in-law stopped. Then I gave birth to a daughter. We named her Lee and worked together to raise her. Benjamin was a wonderful husband and father, and he loved Lee with all his heart. My mother-in-law didn't even congratulate us, let alone express her congratulations. When I went to show her Lee, she just said, So she was born. She didn't even try to hold her. To Lee, my mother-in-law was her grandmother. I wanted her to love her as much as possible, but that didn't seem to be an option. We lived a little distance from my mother-in-law. When Lee turned 18 months old, I went back to work, but there was something strange about the atmosphere in the office. They gossiped about me and treated me like I was a disease. Then, one of my closest colleagues spoke to me. And Lee? There's a rumor going around that you're the evil wife. What? I investigated the source of the rumor, and it turned out to be my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law apparently tearfully told the sales manager who took over for me. That's how the rumor started. I quickly corrected it, but to no avail. Everyone in the company believed my mother-in-law's story. Who plays a victim? I felt uncomfortable at work. I told Benjamin about it, and he warned my mother-in-law. But my mother-in-law was like, it's the truth. After this incident, I decided to stay away from my mother-in-law as much as possible. Benjamin was secretly seeing her, but I didn't see her once for a couple of years. The years passed, Lee turned six, and she was about to enter elementary school. One day, after a long period of no contact with my mother-in-law, one day a large package arrived out of the blue. It came from my mother. I wonder what's going on all of a sudden. I looked at the invoice on the cardboard box and saw that it was a bag. Sarah bought a bag for my daughter? I opened the cardboard box and find a luxury brand school bag inside. Benjamin tells me with a bright look on his face. I knew it. My mother thinks Lee is cute too, after all. That's why she bought her such an expensive gift for her entrance to school. What? Lee's back? I want to see it! I want to see it! Lee's voice was full of excitement as she peeked inside the box. Maybe she wanted to rectify this fraught relationship. With that thought in mind, I took the bag out of the box. Wow, a pink bag! Give it to me quickly! Lee shouts happily. The next moment, I took the bag to the kitchen and set it on fire on the stove. The fire quickly catches on, and the bag from the edges, it begins to melt. Mom, what are you doing? It's Lee's bag! Hey, what the hell have you done? Lee screams, and Benjamin rushes over to her. Benjamin rushed to put out the fire by putting a wet towel on the back. Mother had gone to a lot of trouble to buy this for Lee. What in the world have you done now? Benjamin's face turned red, and he yelled at me. But I told him in a calm voice, Did you see what's inside? Huh? Benjamin looked at me with a furrowed brow, and I said again with a stronger tone, Just take a good look in it. What in the world? Oh, ouch! Benjamin lets out a little yelp. At that moment, a trickle of blood ran down from his fingertip. What the? There's a blade in that bag on the shoulder. Yes, on the shoulder of the bag that my mother-in-law had sent. There was something like a cutter blade in the shoulder of the bag. If Lee had been carrying it on her back as it was, there is no doubt she would have been injured. Why is there a knife here? And look inside the bag. Benjamin fearfully opens the bag. 
he continued in exasperation. On the back of the bag, there were words of abuse. Ugly, stupid, stupid, ugly, stupid, ugly, stupid, poor, little shit. Such foul words were written on the back of the bag. I was boiling with rage. If she wanted to harass me, that was one thing. But to try to hurt my little daughter's feelings, I can't believe she would try to hurt my little girl's mind and heart. What would Lee think if she saw this? All you can do is burn it! I screamed through my tears as I hugged Lee. Benjamin is slumped over with a half burned bag in his hand. Benjamin, say something! At that moment, he just threw the bag down and headed for the front door. Hey, Benjamin? I'm going to my mom's place right now. Wait a minute, I'm going too. I left Lee with my parents. Then Benjamin and I went to my mother in law's house. My mother in law seemed surprised by our sudden arrival. What's the matter with you guys? Mom, what's with the bag? Benjamin asked quietly, and my mother in law laughed. What do you mean? It's a school entrance gift. Don't be silly! I yelled. With a knife in his shoulder and nasty words scribbled on it. You call that a school entrance gift? What? Oh, you already noticed. Did the kid cry? I was hoping to see her cry. I looked at my mother in law in disbelief as she sat up without a care in the world. Sarah, what did you just say? I don't like the kids, you know. If it wasn't for her, Benjamin would still be giving me $1,500. The $360 he's giving me now isn't even enough. I looked at Benjamin, surprised that he was still giving money to my mother in law. Benjamin bit his lip and looked frustrated. Then my mother in law pointed at me and continued You are the one who started all this. I made him marry you because I thought you'd give me more money. But instead of more money, you've given me less. You're still talking about that? I want you to take the kid and get the hell out of my life. Give Benjamin back to me. The next moment, Benjamin, who had remained silent until then, shouted, Don't say another word! Shut up! In contrast to his mother, who looked at Benjamin with a curious expression. Benjamin's face was bright red, and he was shaking. I've been trying to keep Emily and Lee out of harm. I've been giving you money every month. What did you do to my precious daughter? What? Benjamin? I can't imagine how hard Lee would have been if she had seen that bag. I can't imagine what she would have gone through if she had carried it. I'm getting out of control with rage just imagining it. Hey, what are you talking about, Benjamin? You should love me more than that little brat. You should be loving me, your mother. Don't be silly. You're disgusting. Of course she's more important than you. Benjamin's words seems to shock my mother-in-law. Oh, did she ever think that Benjamin really loved her? More than me and Lee? I looked at my mother-in-law with a chill down my spine. My mother-in-law turned pale and muttered, Benjamin, that's ridiculous. The only family I have is Emily and Lee. You're not my family anymore. What? I'm cutting you off as of today, and I don't ever want to see you again. Don't say that, Benjamin, please. Emily, you tell Benjamin to reconsider. My mother-in-law, her face a mess of tears and snot, came running up to me. I shook her off and told her, I will never forgive you, and you will never be a part of our lives again. Don't! Don't! Don't leave me! Emily, let's go! Benjamin took me by the hand, and we left the place, leaving my mother-in-law screaming. After that, my mother-in-law and Benjamin really cut their ties. We moved to a place where my mother-in-law didn't know. At first, my mother-in-law was persistent in contacting us, but after Benjamin blocked the calls, then she stopped. This is what I've heard, that my mother-in-law was buying brand name stuff behind our backs. 
She couldn't forget the admiration she got from everyone when she wore them. She spent all her money on brand name items out of vanity and greed. Even after we stopped giving her money, she was unable to lower her standard of living. She started dipping into the company's money a few years ago. When it came to light, she was finally arrested. She's now behind bars for embezzlement. Of course, we never went to see her. My mother-in-law was buying all kinds of brand name stuff behind our backs. She became a money hoarder, and even tried to harm our precious daughter. She lost her family and her life of luxury and became a criminal. What she thinks now that she has lost everything, I will never know. With the arrest of my mother-in-law, the misunderstanding of the evil daughter-in-law within the company was cleared up. I managed to get things back to normal. I bought Lee a new pink bag. She happily carried it on her back, and happily goes to elementary school every day. From here on, I want to spend every day in peace with my precious family. That's all I can hope for now.